Good afternoon. I'm Gainer Elder Panzer Truppen, Walter Kruger. The 58th Panzer Corps is composed of the 116th Panzer Division and the 560th Volksgrenadier Division. The 116th Panzer is in fair shape given the current conditions. The experienced commanders and staff will make up for the inexperience of the troops. The missing trucks and tractors are the worst problem. The 560th Volksgrenadier Division, however, is not in as good condition. The troops and most of the staff have no combat experience. Oberst or Colonel Rudolf Bader just entered hospital sick. The senior regiment commander, Oberst Rudolf Longhauser, is in command. Just as bad, nearly half of the division will not arrive for up to a week because of the overloaded rail system. The 116th is able to break through and capture the Ore River crossings at Stuppach, Oberhausen, Welkenhausen, and Bevelder. The 516th, its 560th, is to break through and capture bridges at Uren and southeast of Kalburn. The 16th Panzer Regiment will cross first and cross the first bridge taken. Under my control, Panzer Auf Klärung Abteilung 116 will lead the Corps advance. The Führer Begleit Brigade is the Corps Reserve under the 5th Panzer Army control. The Corps is to reach the Meuse River and establish a bridgehead in one to two days. OB West gave the order to start Unternehmen Herbstnehmen. The 116th first attacks failed. The second attack, reinforced by the 16th Panzer Regiment, gains no ground. The 560th is stopped at the edge of the Ore River Bridge at Oren. The Calburn Ore River Bridge is captured, but examination reveals it will require too much time to repair it. The 5th Panzer Army orders the Corps to cross the Ore at Dasburg through the 47th Panzer Corps Bridgehead, and I ordered Panzer Aufklärung Optimum 116 to make the crossing. The 560th Southern Element has reached Heinerscheid with the Division Advance Battalion heading for Bimsfeld. I ordered the 116th Panzer Division to shift its attack south through the 560th and to take the Orn Bridge. The 560 will cover the north flank of the attack. The Orn River Bridge is captured, but is found to need 12 to 15 hours to repair. By this time, Panzer Aufklärung and Tilo 116 has crossed the Orr River at Dausburg and destroyed an enemy tank column south of Fischbach, secured Heinersheide and is beyond Huberdonga. I ordered the 116 Panzer Division to break the 116th Panzer to break off the action at Orr and follow the Panzer Aufklärung Division. The, 516th, the 560th Volksgrenadier is repairing the Orr Bridge and advancing on Mont. With the 116 in the open, I returned the Panzer Aufklärung to its control. At about 1600 hours, the 5th Panzer Army transferred the Fuhrer Brigade Brigade to the 66th Corps. The Panzer Aufklärung reports it is in visual and hoofalese and is heavily occupied by enemy. The 116th Main Body, Panzer Group Bayer, is in the Uflingen, Asselborn, Binsfeld area and is refueling. The Panzer Aufklärung is given a new route. Hoopalese will be captured later. At Tavigny, two groups of enemy vehicles ran into the Aufklärung, who destroyed 21 tanks, six recon vehicles, vehicles, three anti-tank guns, and captured 98 troops of the U.S. 9th Armored Division. The Aufklärung is fueled for 10 kilometers of movement, and the rest of the 116th, only 20. The Third Armored Division of Stolberg, Germany, is ordered south. Combat Command A is sent to look the German paratroopers in 5th Corps rear. Combat Command B to the 18th Airborne Corps contain the German breakthrough from my Combat Command Reserve to the vicinity of Hockney. The 560th took Mont and is advancing Vibrin, Nadrin, Salre. The Panzer Alf Clarion reached Bertone at 1520 and captured a fuel depot. The ortho Breton Road bridge is found blown, so the Panzer Auf Clarung is ordered to Wyampont with the rest of the division following. Panzer Group Bayer ran into a convoy of 60 enemy vehicles capturing about 40 trucks and 500 troops. In the evening, Hufalese is destroyed, is observed to be free of enemy, so Kampf Group Zander is ordered to turn around and attack the La Roche while Kampf Group Rollman sets up a defense south of Hufalese. The Panzer Aufklärung found the one point bridge badly damaged and continued 
to the Marsh Bastogne Road to go off Champlot, then La Roche or March. The 116th plans to march all night. At 23.50, I ordered the 116th not to go too far past the Corps' south boundary. At 18.30, 3rd Armored Division moves out. The, ice, the roads are icy and there's fog in spots. Two M4 medium tanks slide off the icy road and are lost. At 2200 hours, Combat Command Reserve reaches Bear Bay. The only light has been the eerie flicker of buzz bomb exhaust. Occasionally, a buzz bomb motor would cut out and land in the proximity of our column. Beyond I will, the route is a bit vague. We don't know where the Germans are. A checkpoint, at checkpoints, we get rumors of Germans in American MP uniform directing columns astray. At 0 8.55, I arrive at Houghton after a 60 mile, 15 hour road march. Damp fog covers the area. In 15 minutes, General Rose orders CCR to cover the deployment of 7th Corps to advance in zone, destroying all enemy encounters, and secure the road from Van Hay to Hoffelees. The information on the enemy and friendly troops is zero. Task Force Kane is to take Van Hay and Malamtray. Task Force Tucker has Ammonis, Doshan, and Sam Ray, with Lieutenant Colonel Mike Yeomans, along controlling all task forces. Task Force Hogan has LaRoche to Hawthorne. Task Force Orr is in the reserve. Combat Command Reserve Headquarters was set up in SWAT. At about 0800 hours, I ordered the 116th Panzer to withdraw, thrust past Hoffelees, and cross the Song Roach line for Nolazo. Near Air Bamon, the Panzer Aquarium destroys an enemy convoy and reaches Worthville at 0820 hours. Following this report, the 116th Panzer orders its units to withdraw to Hoffelees. The 156th Panzer Grenadier Regiment will withdraw, followed by a Panzer Group Fighter with, with Panzer Aufklärung, securing the route back to Berton, then follow us as the division reserve. The change in direction causes the troops considerable confusion and frustration after advancing so far against meager resistance. While waiting for Panzer Group Fighter to turn around, the Panzer Aufklärung captures the Earth River Bridge intact at 1030 hours. Comp Group Xander reports La Roche occupied and 24 enemy tanks one and a half kilometers to the west. The 560th Folks Grenadier on the Nadrin Samre Road are stopped by enemy troops and tanks on both sides of the Samre. The terrain around La Roche is easy to block. The Samre's area is favorable for massing tanks. Around 1200 hours, I assigned the 116th Panzer to Road Bravo and the 560th Folks Grenadier Road Alpha. The enemy should evacuate La Roche if Somme Ray and Doshan are taken. Between 12.15 and 1300 hours, Task Force Tucker, Hogan, Kane, and Four leave Hawkins. At 1425, I moved my headquarters to Swab. Approximately 14.30, Task Force Tucker meets an officer from 7th Armored Division asking for help because the Germans are attacking their depot in Somme Ray. At 1500 hours, a rocket barrage is laid on Somme Ray. The 60th Panzer Grenadier Regiment attacks from the woods south of town. The 16th Panzer Regiment, with supporting self-propelled vehicles, attack along the Nadine Somre Road. Four Panzer IVs bypass the town to the west. The second battalion of the 60th Panzer Grenadier Regiment will block the road facing La Roche. 560th Folks Grenadier will cover the right flank. After a short fight, the enemy withdrew, and Panzer Group Buyers 15th. 15 Panthers, 6 Panzer IVs, and 2 Sturmgeschutz platoons, SPW Panzer Grenadier Battalion, and Artillery Battalion and Pioneer Company are order, ordered to seize Doshan, Beth, and the Soy Hotten Road. Task Force Tucker found Doshan occupied. Second Recon Platoon moved east for Odane, and radio contact was lost. The main body engaged the enemy just north of Doshan suffered heavy losses, and fought a delay back to Ammonians. First recon platoon with a Company H tank platoon bypassed to the west, proceed, proceeding to Somme Ray, where they ran into a strong enemy force. The crews had to abandon the tanks, climbed onto the armored cars, and escaped towards La Roche. Two armored cars, followed by six tanks, entered the north edge of Somme Ray. The tanks were destroyed by Panzer fire. The crews climbed onto the ground, and armored cars and escaped west. 
Three more tanks approaching from La Roche were destroyed. A depot with 25,000 gallons of fuel, 15,000 rations and clothing were captured. This will replenish the fuel starved 156 Panzer Grenadier Regiment and the 146 Artillery Regiment. The 2nd Battalion of the 60th Panzer Grenadier Regiment set up a roadblock near La Roche. Task Force Kane and Meek reached Nalambre and set up roadblocks. Artillery unit is holding the Rusty Frontier Crossroads. Task Force Hogan passed abandoned 106th Infantry Division vehicles and heard battle noise to the east. At La Roche, they find more 7th Armored Division trains who report contact with Germans to the east. Hogan continued on a mile until felled trees blocked the road between the Earth River and very steep hills. When German fire set the lead tank aflame, the task force called for the night and Colonel Hogan was ordered to attend a meeting at CCR headquarters the next morning. At 2,900 hours, 84th Infantry Division convoys start passing through Houghton on the way to March. Around 2,100, a patrol captured 15 Germans southeast of Houghton. 22.30, our ordered task force order to meet the enemy from Doshan. Just north of the Honings, or meets the elements of task force Tucker withdrawing. Absorbed them, and continues on to set up a roadblock about a mile northwest of Doshan. The 560th Volks Grenadier is to take Airs A while one regiment will stay east of Hoveliz, guarding the Corps' flank. The 5th Panzer Army says the 2nd SS Panzer Corps will take over the area from Somchanto to Samre so that the 560th can move west. Panzer Group Bayer in Beth has sent recon to Mogastir, Wei, and Trina Melin. The Panzer Off Clarum is to cover the division's left and right flanks. Reconnoiter the woods between Saint Ray and La Roche and occupy La Roche if no fighting is required. About 0 100 hours, I assigned Task Force Kane to hold the Rock Peak At 0 430, there's a report from Houghton of vehicle noise to the south. This is the 84th Infantry Division moving into the Marsh Houghton line. At 0 550, a patrol on the way to me reports being fired on by Germans in U.S. vehicles around the way. These Germans were cut off by Task Force Orr and Hogan and present no threat. At 0615, I ordered the 23rd Armored Engineer Battalion to send a patrol to check the way. Panzer Group Bayer reports capturing an enemy infantry platoon in March Column, north of Way. Task Force Kane reports the 2nd Recon Platoon, and Task Force Tucker is in Frature holding that position. Task Force Hogan reports Colonel Hogan on his way up to CCR headquarters missing after running the German troops in the Houghton Road. The task force or attack on Doshan and Samre at 0700 is stopped by intense small arms and tank fire. Panzer Group Bayer captures Trinal and continues on. Bayer's grenadiers enter eastern Houghton and take two POWs from a farmhouse. Our grenade explosions in the fight certainly alert the enemy. Houghton is reported to be heavily occupied. General Ro Rose relays a report of German artillery hit in Houghton. This has to be long-range artillery. I've not heard from the 23rd Engineer Patrol. The south end of Swa, I hear weapon noise as the fog lifts. I spot vehicles turning onto the Houghton Swa Road. I report this to Headquarters 3rd Army and are given the mission of defending Houghton. 23rd Engineers position a squad on the railroad embankment at the edge of the orchard. Park a bridge truck at the grain mill and a supply truck closer to the bridge as roadblocks. Seven German tanks, several other armed vehicles, and infantry exit the woods. Four of the tanks with infantry enter the town. The lead Mark V pushed the bridge truck at the grain, grain, grain mill out of the way. The 40 millimeter Vopers and 50 caliber machine guns and 37 millimeter and tank gun open fire. The Mark V continued on, turning its turret toward the fire but the following infantry ran into the buildings for cover. Unable to see where the fire is coming from, the following Mark V, two Mark IVs, and the rest of the infantry turned north behind the buildings. The engineers on the embankment fire on the infantry who head into the buildings for cover. A M5 light and M4 medium tank that straggled in from the road march are sent to engage the Germans. The M5's crew bailed out upon seeing the Mark V's turret turning toward them. The Mark V shot set it aflame as the M4 drove out of the alley, fired, and bounced two rounds off the German front hall. The M5 shot, Mark V shot went through the M4. 
The Mark V next shot, the truck, the supply truck locked in the road, and there was a huge blast. The engineers forgot where they put their bulk explosives. Three of the 16 37 millimeter rounds fired at the Mark V hit the tank's wheels and one jammed the turret. As the Mark V backed up, several bazookas fired and immobilized the tank. Around 1,000 hours, it ordered the armored infantry platoon, two medium tanks, and two light tanks at the roadblock in May to come to hop. Oberleutnant Cole's Panzer V led two Panzer IVs north of buildings along the Rue Hope. As Cole crashed through the brick wall along the Rue de Ecoles, he is hit by two rounds. Unable to locate the source of the fire, Cole reversed into the orchard, and the Panzer IVs did the same. The 76mm armed M4 hit at Mark V that appeared on a Rue de Ecoles north of Roll Hot with two shots. The tank reversed out of sight. The soldier with a bazooka crossed the bridge and fired at the Mark V to flush it out. The tank appeared between two buildings and the M4 destroyed it. The two Mark IVs withdrew east. The 23rd engineers report the German attack has been stopped. Headquarters, 36 Armored Infantry Regiment, reports the situation is still desperate. How can two officers 300 yards apart see the situation so differently? The infantry and tanks from May have arrived in Hobbit. Six 23rd Engineer bridge trucks, one M4 tank, one M5 tank, and several other vehicles have been destroyed. At 1310, I am informed by 3rd Armored Division, elements of the 84th Infantry Division will leave CCR in Hobbit. Two Panzer Vs, one self-propelled vehicle, were destroyed and several other tank commanders were wounded by headshots. With weak grenadier support, the attack halts and the troops withdraw to the east edge of Hockey. Task Force Kane on Doshan, <coughs> an attack on Doshan is stopped at Baraki Frontier and La Fosse. A recon platoon sets up a roadblock at Odain. The enemy infiltrated the woods west of Task Force Orr and up the draw to the east of the roadblock, making the position untenable. All units were glued to Avonians. Around 1500, the last CCR uncommitted elements attacked from SWA and was stopped by the fire of two German tanks at the crossroads north of Mill Meads. The 51st Engineer Combat Battalion withdraws from Hotton except for half a squad left at the bridge to blow it up if necessary. Enemy fire from SWA blocks the SWA Hotton Road during the day. Most of the 1st Battalion of the Panzer Grenadier Regiment 60 is facing squad. The 2nd Battalion is positioned near Verpin. The Panzer Grenadier Regiment 156 marched to Hotton is delayed by clogged roads. As the 156 passes through the Somme depot, fuel canisters stacked along the road are thrown up onto the vehicles. Panzer off room attack on Amoni meets heavy resistance north and west of the town, swung east to Lamermanil to bypass the resistance and is stopped again by heavy fire. In the afternoon, SPW Grenadiers advanced over Maylen, Mole, and entered the forest east of Hotton, cutting the Sawa Hotton Road and reaching the north edge of the forest. The 116th Panzer request for air support goes unanswered by the Luftwaffe. The 560th Folks Grenadiers lead comp group is on the south side of the Fort La and trailing comp group has reached Broke de Fritschur. At 1530 hours, all senior officers in hot and meet to organize the defense. At 1730, 15 infantrymen of the 84th Infantry Division arrive at Hotton with orders to stay south of the river. They have no information on the rest of the 84th. The 5th Panzer Army ordered the Corps to bypass resistance and only cover the flanks. The bulk of forces are to advance toward the Meuse. Continuing to confuse, split up, surround, and reconnoiter in force and deceive the enemy. The 116th is to attack during the night to gain crossings over the Orth River. Despite the failure to take Hotton, 58th Panzer Corps has made the farthest advance. Task Force Orr reported a column of enemy vehicles struck a moaning from the south at 2,200 hours. After losing two tanks and nine armored cars, the Germans withdrew. <coughs> the rest of the night, only enemy patrols were in encountered. At 0400, I was called the 3rd Armored <coughs> Division CP outside Van Hay. <coughs> Unable to get the 84th Infantry Division to take over Hotton. General Rose planned a two-pronged attack to 0900 clear the Swahotten Death area. Task Force Mays will attack west towards Hamtau. 
Task Force Hogan will attack northwest to be making contact with Task Force Mullins. <coughs> Task Force Smithers will defend Houghton and support the attack by fire. 83rd Field Artillery Battalion is in direct support. In the morning, the 560th Folk Tournament relieved the Panzer Alf Plurum of T-116 near Amelanese so they can move to, move to Erze through the Dope Von Tal. At 0730, 1st Battalion, the 517th Parachute Infantry Regiment Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Bill Boyle, Boyle relies at my command post. The 1st of the 517 is the seas, Hade Heights Crossroads, and clear the Swahotten Road. His troops are hours away. At daylight, Task Force Kane attack on Doshan fails. The Task Force 4 attack on Doshan ran into him, and an enemy column moving toward the morning and has to withdraw. A German patrol is spotted on the Swahotten Road past the cemetery, while a pant Mark V moves along the embankment to the orchard and the park behind the apple tree. Three M18s exchange fire with the Mark V without success, then the Mark V will troop east. At 0900 hours, the task force maze and the Hogan attacks jump off. Oberfeld Babel Pickler let the M4 tank leading the U.S. attack from SWA come very close to his Panther before destroying it. The 116th has no battle worthy tanks in reserve. By 1200 hours, six new tanks arrive. 17 more are on the way, and 10 have been repaired and returned to duty. Two repaired Panthers moved into the forest south of Milling and destroyed four more M4 tanks. By 1,200 hours, Task Force Mays lost seven of nine tanks stolen in their attack. Task Force Hogan reports being stopped by enemy fire at the south edge of D, followed by a strong counterattack and was ordered to hold in place. Once the Swah Hotten Road is cleared, help will be sent. Task Force o Hogan is low on gas and pulling back to the high ground at Mark Array. Task Force Orr reported a German column west of the Moaning's moving north. With the enemy attack stopped, Panzer Group Fire turned back to Hotten. Five Panthers moved up to the edge of the cemetery and two more behind the Verdun House, assembling for an attack. In the late afternoon, Panzer Off Clarum of Thielen 116 joined the 560th Polk's Grenadier Division attack on Avalonie. Colonel Hogan walked into his Task Force Mellon Crate position after being missing almost 30 hours. The 1400 Task Force King attack is stopped by intense fire. The West Column secured the crossroads north of Lamour Akin and around the town. A token force was in La Hulse. A recon platoon, tank section, and some towed tank destroyers reinforced Barack de Couture. The East Column set up all around the fence in free new. A little after 1500, the 84th Infantry Division's 3M18 south of the river unsuccessfully engaged in Mark V near the Green House. After moving to the 23rd Engineer's position on a bluff, the M18 volley fire destroyed three Mark Vs. Two remaining tanks and a half track and ammo carrier group. At 1500, the first of 517 starts arriving. At dusk, Task Force Orr reports the German attack along the Doshan Road and Houghton reports being attacked by German tanks and infantry. With enemy fire blocking the east end of Houghton in daylight, the 2nd Battalion of Panzer Grenadier Regiment 156 attacks after dark, with Panzer Group Bayer Panzers firing on the buildings. The 4th Group is repulsed. The 2nd Group reaches Rue de Ecoles. The 3rd pushes west around Rue, along the Rue Haute, taking a few more buildings. The troops north of the schoolhouse were draw to the railroad. Troops in the schoolhouse joined the withdrawal and set up the fence along the tracks. The Germans occupied two thirds of the buildings along the Little Hot and all buildings north of the tracks. Panzer off Clarung of Tila 116 reported finding La Roche unoccupied, the bridge lightly damaged, and its scouts moving west. The lead elements of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps have relieved the 560th Volksgrenadier Division that broke the fresh air and further east. The 560th ordered those units to the Squaw Houghton area. The Germans were stopped at the Houghton Railroad embankment and shorted the bridge. Short seven truckloads of troops. The first of the 517 crosses the line of departure at 2000 hours and were stopped after a 1,000 yard advance. The German counterattack by tanks and infantry is shot down, but more German tanks are hurt. Lieutenant Colonel Boyle canceled the attack but I ordered the attack continue. 
General Rose insists we must shove this attack through tonight. A new plan is needed. Task Force Kane attacked on Doshan using 70 first to the 517th paratroopers. Advancing from Lamorne fails. By 0215 hours, it is apparent that the attack on Houghton will fail. The 116th is ordered to break off the attack on Houghton and remain in place until relieved by the 560th Volks Grenadier. The firing in Houghton slows as the 116th withdraws to the forest east of the town. About 0200 hours, Task Force King's paratroopers tried to take Doshan again and immediately pinned down by German fire. At the same time, Lieutenant Colonel Boyle took two platoons of the 5th Infantry, four tanks, and six half-tracks to march to Houghton through Nye and attack back towards Spa, while the rest of the 517th under Major Frazier continued to attack toward Houghton from Spa. At 0230, Frazier's 517th force advanced and stopped by German <coughs> fire and set up defense. At 0400, Boyle's 517th force arrived in Houghton turned east for Swa, only to be stopped by German fire. The 5th Panzer Army ordered the Corps to take Derboe, Sine, Line, and reports the weather will clear about noon of this day. About 1,400 hours are ordered the 116th to cross the Earth River at La Roche, occupy the heights south of Minot-Verdun, and break out east of March. The troops are near exhaustion from being on the move for seven days. Losses to enemy fire have been light, but weather, terrain, and manufacturing sabotage have caused a high number of vehicle breakdowns. The Panzer Regiment only has about half of its tanks operational. Task Force King hands off the rock at 1,200 hours, but still had units on site when the Germans overran it at 1,800. Odain was lost at 2,000 hours. Malapri was evacuated about 2,100. The Swahotten Road is cleared of Germans at 11.15 hours. Task Force Hogan was ordered to abandon his vehicles at dusk and marched into U.S. lines 14 hours later. Manhay was lost about midnight. Task Force Orr held Monings until relieved on 25 December. Freynew was evacuated 2,100 hours 26 December. Despite the failure to seize the manhay Hawkeley's line and the loss of ground, 7th Corps was able to assemble and deploy to stop the German advance. This concludes our presentation.